Welcome to A Grey Barn Rising. I'm sitting here with Bootsy Beagle, and I'm reading the poems this evening of one of my very favorite poets, the American poet James Wright. James Wright lived from 1927 to 1980. He has had such a powerful and deep impact on American poetry, on North American poetry. It's almost difficult to chronicle the impact he has had. He's just such an important poet. And I wanted to read some of his poems this evening. I wanted to begin by reading from his incredible book, The Branch Will Not Break. And as many of you know, I really, if I have a first edition of a book, I really like to read from it and experience and re-experience the joy I have in feeling the textures and the whole tactile experience of reading from that book. Um, I was amazed, I'm amazed every time I look at this book that there are so many, not just good, but great poems in this book. I, I don't know how, how that could happen. I, I, it, it, it's mind boggling to me. It's like poem after poem is just uh, splendid. So I'm going to read several poems from this book and then a couple of poems from the complete poems above the river. Autumn begins in Martin's Ferry, Ohio. In the Shreve High football stadium, I think of Pollock's nursing long beers in Tiltonsville and gray faces of Negroes in the blast furnace at Benwood and the ruptured night watchmen of wheeling steel, dreaming of heroes. All the proud fathers are ashamed to go home. Their women cluck like starved pullets, dying for love. Therefore, their sons grow suicidally beautiful at the beginning of October and gallop terribly against each other's bodies. Wright had such a capacity to tap into the psyche of um, the working class and of the every man and every woman and to the, the, the common person. I'm deeply moved by that. And his poems were also, although they chronicle oftentimes social and economic conditions, they also were uh, simultaneously visionary. This is a poem that deals with nature, as he often does, uh, and also has that visionary uh, element that many of James Wright's poems have. This poem in particular was influenced by the, the Chinese poets who he adored, particularly the poets of the Tang Dynasty. And uh, in fact, its title, is uh, very long, like a lot of the, the titles of China, uh, poems by Chinese poets. This is called Lying in a Hammock at William Duffy's Farm in Pine Island, Minnesota. Not only does this title share the length of uh, ancient Chinese poetry titles, but it also shares the element that in the title we are located in a particular place, and in this, in this instance in Pine Island, Minnesota. Lying in a hammock at William Duffy's farm in Pine Island, Minnesota. Over my head, I see the bronze butterfly asleep on the black trunk, blowing like a leaf in green shadow. Down the ravine, behind the empty house, the cowbells follow one another into the distances of the afternoon. To my right, in a field of sunlight between two pines, the droppings of last year's horses blaze up into golden stones. I lean back as the evening darkens and comes on. A chicken hawk floats over, looking for home. I have wasted my life. talked about the visionary element. That's certainly a visionary ending to that poem. The Jewel. There is this cave in the air behind my body. 
that nobody is going to touch a cloister, a silence, closing around a blossom of fire. When I stand upright in the wind, my bones turn to dark emeralds. Having lost my sons, I confront the wreckage of the moon, Christmas, 1960. After dark, near the, near the South Dakota border, the moon is out hunting everywhere, delivering fire and walking down hallways of a diamond. Behind a tree, it lights on the ruins of a white city Frost, frost, where are they gone? Who lived there? Bundled away under wings and dark faces. I am sick of it, and I go on, living, alone, alone, past the charred silos, past the hidden graves of Chippewas and Norwegians. This cold winter, Moon spills the inhuman fire of jewels into my hands. Dead riches, dead hands, the moon darkens, and I am lost in the beautiful white ruins of America. Another poem from this book, The Branch Will Not Break, A Blessing. Just off the highway to Rochester, Minnesota, twilight bounds softly forth on the grass, and the eyes of those two Indian ponies darken with kindness. They have come gladly out of the willows to welcome my friend and me, we step over the barbed wire into the pasture where they have been grazing all day alone. They ripple tensely. They can hardly contain their happiness that we have come. They bow shyly as wet swans. They love each other. There is no loneliness like theirs. At home once more, they begin munching the young tufts of spring in the darkness. I would like to hold the slenderer one in my arms, for she has walked over to me and nuzzled my left hand. She is black and white. Her mane falls wild on her forehead, and the light breeze moves me to caress her long ear that is delicate as the skin over a girl's wrist. Suddenly I realize that if I stepped out of my body, I would break into blossom. Just another incredible poem by, by James Wright. Those are a few poems from The Branch Will Not Break, and I would like to um, read a couple of more poems. This from um, his book, To a Blossoming Pear Tree. And this is this wild poem called Hook. Another one of my favorite James Wright poems. Hook. I was, a, I was only a young man in those days. On that evening, the cold was so goddamned bitter, there was nothing. Nothing. I was in trouble with a woman, and there was nothing there but me and dead snow. I stood on the street corner in Minneapolis, lashed this way and that. Wind rose from some pit, hunting me. Another bus to St. Paul would arrive in three hours if I was lucky. 
Then the young Sue loomed beside me. His scars were just my age. Ain't got no bus here a long time, he said. You got enough money to get home on? What did they do to your hand, I answered. He raised up his hook into the terrible starlight and slashed the wind. Oh, that, he said. I had a bad time with a woman. Here, you take this. Did you ever feel a man hold 65 cents in a hook and place it gently in your freezing hand? I took it. It wasn't the money I needed, but I took it. And finally, I want to close with one of my very favorite, if not my favorite, James Wright poem uh, entitled Northern Pike. I don't know if you can hear Bootsy snoring or not. I'm pretty aware of her snore right now. Um, but it's also very calming sound. Northern Pike. All right. Try this then. Everybody I know and care for and everybody else is going to die in a loneliness I can't imagine and a pain I don't know. We had to go on living. We untangled the net. We slit the body of this fish open from the hinge of the tail to a place beneath the chin I wish I could sing of. I would just as soon we let the living go on living. An old poet whom we believe in said the same thing. And so we paused among the dark cattails and prayed for the muskrats, for the ripples below their tails for the little movements that we knew the crawdads were making underwater, for the right-hand wrist of my cousin, who is a policeman. We prayed for the game warden's blindness. We prayed for the road home. We ate the fish. There must be something very beautiful in my body. I am so happy. That is such an incredible poem where it begins this complete despair about the human condition and where it ends to realizing the depth and beauty inside one's own self and the happiness and the joy and the generative quality therein. Incredible, incredible poem. That's entitled Northern Pike. So the, the final two poems that I read, I read from Above the River, which is the complete poems of James Wright. This book is readily available, and I would encourage you to run out and get it, order it tonight if you must, tomorrow if you need to wait a day, but get this book uh, no matter what and read through the poems of James Wright. And the poems that I read prior to those last two uh, are from The Branch Will Not Break. This book is also um, gathered in the complete poems. So if you got this book, uh, this book is, is in there as well. So those are a few of the poems of uh, James Wright, a monumental American poet. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed hearing his poems as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you. Thanks so much for joining us this evening.